the way to do this is to give pri priority to domestic oversight, domestic institutions, processes, and mechanisms for oversight, supervision, and regulation of financial markets. And building on that, you get to a place where you then can talk about how to regulate to deal with the international financial flows, which are also significant. But you don't start with this idea, I think, that was prominent around the time of the first G20 summit of the College of Supervisors, because the problem <coughs> isn't that you can't solve the problem just by regulating the international flows. The problem originated, as Barry pointed out, in the United States. And it was a domestic failure, so it was a domestic institutional failure. So the question is, how do you correct that? What I have proposed is that the IMF take the lead in setting up essentially three tables in a style that the OECD is common at the OECD in Paris, which is a policy table in which officials, you'd set up three of them in my view, one on on oversight, one on supervision, one on regulation, and you'd invite members of the institutions, officials from the institutions of those three respective domains from the 20 countries to come to Washington, sit around the table as you do at the OECD, but the OECD is not the place to do this for obvious political reasons because it's a, it's a, the membership is biased in the OECD, is, and you exchange, you undergo peer review and, and sharing of comparative experience with a view of each uh, country, each government, drawing lessons from what it learns about the behaviors and mechanisms, institutions, and processes in other countries. The United States, I think, has a lot to learn. The fact of the matter is there was a process like this in the G20 called a Financial Sector Assessment Program, in which studies were done of finan the financial sector of, of most of the, of the G20 countries, and the United States demurred and did not do an FSAP, as it was called. As Paul Martin pointed out, the former finance minister of, and prime minister of Canada pointed out at the time of the G20 summit in November, that who knows what would have happened had the United States undergone that G20 FSAP process and made some changes that's in its institutional structures, maybe the whole crisis would not have happened. So I think that's, that does two things at once. What my idea is, and I want to be clear about it, is, and it's consistent with what Eswar said about the timing and this, the deliberateness and the carefulness with which this needs to be done, is that you're not trying to have the IMF dictate us solutions on this front. You are not trying to have countries come to the table so that they can emulate or imitate the success stories of some other countries. Rather, what you're using is the, the policy table as a catalyst for the exchange of, of experiences and views so that countries can selectively borrow for themselves institutional lessons which can apply and take hold and be effective in their own domestic domains.